Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the master track in Reaper. Now, if you're new to Reaper, you may not even realize that there is a master track because you don't really need to see it that often. If we create new tracks over here by double clicking, let's make three of them. All these tracks are going to our master track, which is then routed to our speakers using the audio interface plugged into our computer. So to see the master track, we'll go up here to view and choose it right here, master track. We could also use the keystroke over here. And here's the master track. It looks very similar to the others, but there are differences. One of the biggest differences is that there's only one master track in each project. Unlike these tracks, which we can have as many as we want. Now by default, all these tracks are being routed to this track. And we can see that by going to the routing. And right here is the master send. That's routing all these tracks into here. So let's open up a project so we can see how it's used in practice. So a project right here with some drums, bass, some pianos and keys. Let's hear it. Now again, there's a master track that we're not seeing. If we go to view, we can view it right here. And this is our master track. If we mute the track, we don't hear the music. Unmute it. And we do. And because all the audio is going to this track, it's a good place to fade out or fade in the whole mix. Or adjust the master level of our final mix. We could check our mix in mono using this button. We could pan it left and right. We can adjust the width. And we could even adjust how much it's sending to our speakers. If we open up the routing on the track, it looks like this. This fader is the same fader as this one. So if we move it, it affects the mix. But we also have a fader down here. This is actually sending to our speakers. I have mine set up to output one and two, but you could add more right here. Like for headphones, if they plug into three and four, they show up here as well. And they're also gonna get the full mix. And we could delete them or add more right here. But this is all happening after the master fader. So it starts from our tracks, going to the master track or the master fader right here, and then going to its send to our speakers or our headphones or anything else we plug in to the output of our audio interface. Now we could also create envelopes for the master fader, just like any other track right here, volume, pan, and everything else. Let's choose volume. And we could use this to automate our master mix. Let's say we wanted to fade in. We can create some points and fade it in. Or fade it out. Or any automation we want to do on the whole mix. We can also add effects to the master track. Right over here, let's choose an EQ. Let's make this a low pass. And that's going to affect the entire mix. We can add compression or any effect that you want right to the master track, and it's going to affect everything. Let's take a look at the routing. If we go here to view and go to the routing matrix, 
we can see the routing in our project. Here are the tracks, which are all being sent to the master right here. And then the master or the master track is going out to our main outputs or our speakers. So if I turned it off here and hit play, we're not going to hear anything. Turn it back on. And we do. Because all of these tracks are going to the master track and the master track is going out to our interface or our speakers. So if we want to change it to our headphones, we can do that here or any other output that we want or multiple ones. Just click them all or drag them. Now, if we want to bypass it or go around the master track, we just clear them all here and have the tracks directly go into our main output and get rid of this one. So now the mix is going to be the same, but it's not being affected by the master track. Watch. Because it's going around our master track. It's going directly to our speakers. But normally, our tracks are going to go to the master track, and the master track is going to be routed to our speakers. Now, on our track control panel, the master track has to be first. We can't move it around like we can with the other tracks. It's always the first track, but it behaves differently in our mixer. So let's hide it over here. Let's go to our mixer. And we see right now that the master track is hidden. But we can right click over here and show it in the mixer. And it shows up right here. And right now it's on the left side, but we can move it to the right side right here. Or we could separate it in its own window. And it shows up like this. And the master track is its own floating window. Or we could put it back right over here. Or we could put it in the dock. Show in Docker. Then it shows up over here, which is kind of handy when you're working in the track control panel. You can work on your normal tracks over here, and your master track is always over here. If you need to get to it very quickly and very often, now, we could also change the look of it. Go to our options, under layouts. We could change it to large. It looks like that. Or the session mixer, which looks like this. We can also change the look in the track control panel. Let's view it again. Over here. If we go to our options, to layouts. Right down over here is the master track panel, and we can change how it looks here. This is the default, but we can change it to large. Looks like that. Or large with a pop-up fader, like that, with a bigger fader. Or small full meter, which looks like this. So we can see the meter a lot easier. So that's pretty much it. That's the master track in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.